Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. We're back. We're back after our season four summer reruns. And we're ready, dying, really, to get started on season five. And boy, howdy, do we have a good one here. Just point out really fast oh, before yeah. we really get into it because we don't see him much. But it's worth it just for Stan's hair. His hair's glorious. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. I was distracted by a certain ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> I love the ponytail. <laughs> this week we're talking about season five, episode one, titled Hostile Takeover. This is probably the best episode name we've had in a long uh, it time. It really too. was. Like, it really was apt to the episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very hostile. <laughs> this whole episode was very hostile. <laughs> it originally premiered on November 4th, 1988. It is directed by Ken Salars. Salars? I'm guessing here. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> this is the first episode he's written. Now, I think we're going to see a lot of this. It's going to be like, this is the first episode they've written. They'll also write five more episodes because they like, turned over the whole writing staff between seasons four and five. He has four more episodes coming, including Freefall, which is the finale. Well, that's good. That, that's a good sign, right? <laughs> he, wrote the, he wrote both of them. Yeah, it'd be a bad sign if like Dick Wolf took over for the finale. <laughs> <laughs> it's directed by some guy named... Don, Dan, Dan Johnson, Don Johnson, Don Johnson, whatever this guy. He's like directed some lesser known episodes. Really? Like he directed this episode? By Hooker, by Crook, and Love at First Sight. I mean, he is like not even good episodes. Did like, he really direct this episode? Yes, he did. Wow. <laughs> that does not surprise me because you kind of get a very tough and strong Burnett in this episode. He definitely props himself up, you know. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> if you listen to those episodes, Back in the World by Hooker by Crook and Love at First Sight. It's like very friendly to Crockett episodes. Very true. I yeah. mean, he is directing himself. Very. So, you know. Uh, you know, at one point, I, I think I even made the comment of Crockett the Terminator. <laughs> oh, man. Worlds collide if Michael Bain and Don Johnson did a thing together. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> I would be there. <laughs> Make that happen, you guys. Get together. Come on. <laughs> All right, John. We're back. Season five. We have new showrunner. We have new writers. I wonder. I have no idea what to expect with music this season. What do you got for us? Okay. So we, we are going to start off with someone that we've already talked about once before. We're going to talk about Under the Radar by Underworld. You might remember them from previous Vice episode segment when they did the song Glory Glory in the episode Badge of Dishonor. Uh, a little reminder, the principal members were Carl Hyde and Rick Smith. They also partnered with uh, DJ Darren Emerson from 91 to 99. Also toured with uh, Darren Prince as a tour member in 05 and 016. But mostly they are known because of the titles, uh, the biggest song off of their second album, the second album named Second Toughest Infants, by <laughs> the way. Yes, their song, Born Slippy, period, Nux, was featured <laughs> in, them now. was featured on the, uh, tra on the soundtrack for the film Train Spotting. It blew up, and it blew up for them, and they've, they're actually considered one of the, well, one, Born Slippy, period, Nux, is considered one of the best dance <laughs> tracks of, of the decade. So, mind you, that was the 90s. Kind of the, uh, the, the bottom tier of decades as far as decades go. You know, nostalgia is high right now, and everything is nostalgia-based. And I will just say, just warn people, like the 80s has been popular, and the 80s coming back has been a thing, and now everyone's starting to hype up the 90s. Like, we don't want to go back to that time. That was a silly time. No. There's no reason to go back to the no, 90s. No, the, the 90s was terrible. The, the 90s started with Vanilla Ice and the MC Hammer. We went from there. Okay? <laughs> the, we don't need to revisit that. We already talked about Underworld once. A few things I might have left out the first time. In the disco scene in the movie Vanilla Sky, they featured Underworld's 93 hit Rez. Also made the soundtrack for Danny Boyle's 2006 film Sunshine. And actually, I watched that mm -hmm. recently. That's a really good sci-fi flick. Something else unique. Let's see. Uh, in 2007, at the Eject Festival in Athens, Greece, Approximately 30 masked Greek anarchists stormed the stadium 
and Rick Smith was amongst those injured during the ensuing violence, and it actually Damn. forced them to, to cancel their remaining shows. Yeah. Now, I find this interesting because the, the, the anarchists stormed the stadium during the Beastie Boys set. And I'm <laughs> just wondering, was that what set them off? Why, uh, <laughs> why are anarchists storming a Beastie Boys concert? It seems <laughs> odd. <laughs> the last thing I will throw out there too is that born slippy period Nux two X's <laughs> came in at number 65 in the 2009 poll put out there by Triple J on Triple J's hottest 100 of all time if you want to know who Triple J is well the people who voted in the poll the Australian public so Australia <laughs> loves you baby <laughs> <laughs> so thinking speaking of popular in Australia, let's talk about our second artist, second artist, Tony Childs with the song Walk and Talk Like Angels. Tony Childs began in music in 1979 by filling in for singer Terry N uh, Nunn during so several live shows with the band Berlin. She would go from there and her next notable band she would join would be Tony and the Movers. Tony and the Movers toured for two years but never released an album. But the band was made up with a couple pretty big name members. They had Jack Sherman, who would later go on to join the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Mickey Steele, who would become a member of the Bengals. Hmm. She would leave that band and perform a little bit in around L.A. under the name Nadia Kopich. Uh, after a while, uh, she would approach Island Music and to basically told them, hey, sign me. They did sign her in a way. They financed her move to London, where she lived in an empty office and record uh, in a recording studio. She would clean the office, sweeping the floors and uh, dusting and stuff as rent, so that she could basically learn the music industry. She never didn't record anything of her own there, but she recorded it with backup vocals and stuff for other musicians. So in 1985, she returned to LA and signed with A&M Records, and she began working with David Ricketts. David Ricketts was one of the members of David plus David, the other David being David Berwald. So I was not very familiar with David plus David, but I will say this. David Ricketts helps really helps launch Tony Child's career, mm. but he is the least he is the lesser successful David of David and David because <laughs> David Berwald would go on to help launch Cheryl Crow's career. <laughs> so uh, gonna weigh it out here and say Cheryl Crow's the winner. <laughs> but back to Tony, the first thing she would do with David Ricketts at a at A and M is the soundtrack for the film Echo Park. She would then provide backup vocals for David on David, David and David, David plus David, or David and David's album, Boomtown, which I believe was their only album by the Davids. <laughs> so, but Boomtown actually did fantastic in Australia. And I bring that up. <laughs> because Tony Child's debut album, Union, would be released in 1988, and it would be released to critical acclaim, even though it would not produce any top 40 hits in the U.S. Despite not blowing up in the U.S., it would be huge in Australia and New Zealand. I mean, <laughs> huge, like double platinum. Her follow-up to Union was House of Hope, and even with the title track being featured in the movie Thelma and Louise, it did not sell well, guys. It did not sell well in the U.S. A&M Records actually would drop her after that because, it, to date, it's only sold about 203,000 copies. It went like double platinum in Australia and New Zealand. Like, it was huge in Australia. <laughs> so she'd get another chance at the U.S. audience. She would sign with a Geffen subsidiary called DGS. Or, I'm sorry, DGC. She would release her next album, The Woman's Boat. And despite featuring friend of Vice music or Gabriel... Guys, it still sold poorly in the U.S. <laughs> uh, and even despite some critics giving it some high marks, yeah, to date, it's only sold about 66,000 units in the U.S. 
Unfortunately, she would be dropped from her U.S. label again. But it would do huge in Australia and New Zealand. So she still got that Aussie money coming in, baby. The Aussie giving her money. So she would release the very best of Tony Childs, which would be the fifth best-selling album of 1996 in Australia. <laughs> Just killing it. Just killing it. <laughs> you know, and it made me think about, I don't really re know what they, I cannot for the life of me place what they call money in Australia. I so, think it's just dollars. Uh, is it dollars? I, I yeah. know it's got to be something ridiculous. It, it's it's got to <laughs> be like, like, I, I, like <laughs> it's got to be like, like here's five Dundees and a Wambuku, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Couple Wallabies. <laughs> Yeah, a couple of wallabies. Like, it, it's got to have a ridiculous name. So she's rolling in the wallabies right now. <laughs> it's got more D's and wallabies than you would ever believe. <laughs> Unfortunately, she would retire from music in 1997. She actually, she was diagnosed with Graves' disease, which is a form of hyperthyroidism. Uh, and it would actually prompt her to, to start a charity, the charity called a charity called Dream a Dolphin. Since 2004, she has pretty much re recovered from Graves' disease. She would begin performing again and actually started recording again, including the album Keeping the Faith. Hopefully, that trend continues, and maybe you can catch Tony Childs it, or the next time she's touring Australia or New Zealand. You can go and grab a show. I'm sure you can find tickets to a show in Sydney right now. Dude, so, uh, by the way, she did move to Australia eventually, but she actually, up until about 2012, lived in Hawaii. <laughs> then she moved to Australia, you know, during the Great Comeback Tour. There's well, your music. I don't think we have enough didgeridoos to keep this section going. <laughs> we got to get our final thoughts. <laughs> And that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. We would love, love, love to hear from you. Email us, GoWithTheHeat at gmail.com. Get us on Twitter at Go With The Heat. Instagram at Go With The Heat. Facebook.com slash Go With The Heat. That I mentioned, you can pretty much find us anywhere at Go With The Heat, including GoWithTheHeat.com. That's where you can go to the website. You can find all the ways to contact us, all the ways that you can subscribe to the show. We are on Anchor. If you'd like to listen to us on there, you can listen to us on that podcast platform of choice. We're on every podcast platform. You name it. Shoutcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast. <laughs> you name it. We're on there. And you know what? The number one way that you can support the show, go to that podcast platform of choice, iTunes, and give us a five-star rating. No one reads the review so don't bother writing a review and no one will ever know i told you to go and give us five stars so just give us five stars five pineapples six bananas whatever the <laughs> highest rating is on your podcast your platform of choice go in there and write a review you can also you can also throw us some wallabies or maybe we're not asking for a whole lobster i mean we're not crazy but not, maybe not a pineapple <laughs> yeah yeah Maybe like a pineapple, you know, uh, if you go to our Patreon, you know, a couple, yep. couple wallabies, a pineapple, maybe a pine cone, <laughs> pine cone 50. Support step number one, go to that podcast platform, leave us five stars, write a review about how much you love Sonny's ponytail. Write that review about his ponytail. Then two, go check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, pals. <laughs>